The good news is when it's 50 plus degrees outside, the snow melts fast. The bad news is, is there's going to be quite a bit of mud to deal with this year. This maple tree produces more sap than any other tree around the place. This maple tree sits right near a spot where I think another spring could be. My goal is to get the water hooked up. In the coming weeks, the water is going to be very important when it comes to drywall paint, things like this. Rather than going outside and walking through the mud, I thought it was time to get the water turned on. For, for whatever reason, I've been carrying around a one inch pressure regulator for about seven years now. I bought it for some particular job and never used it. They're not cheap and it's a perfect application for what I need now. This pressure regulator guarantees that the pressure in the house will not be any higher than about 75 pounds. With the water tank up as high as it is, I would guess that we were right around 100 to 110 pounds of pressure, which is a little bit excessive. As the water line comes into the house, I'm installing a shutoff valve, a pressure regulator, and a gauge, just so I can see in fact what's going on. The pressure regulator adjusts down to as low as 35 PSI and as high as 75 PSI. I went to the hose bibs on both sides of the house and allowed the air pressure to push out the water that had been sitting in there for quite a while. After the water ran for a few minutes, it cleared right up. The water is bone chilling cold. I'll be shocked if it's any more than 33 degrees. But having the water on from this point forward is going to be necessary. Before I spray foam these bathtubs, I need to put as much weight in them as I can. Putting 30 to 40 gallons of water in there is over 240 pounds and should be more than adequate when it comes to putting the foam underneath the tub. Putting the foam underneath the tub does a few things. It keeps the squeaks to a minimum, keeps the tubs from moving around, 
Long term, it prevents potential stress cracks. It also insulates to a point. But with an acrylic or a fiberglass tub, the skirts on the front of the tub are also prone to moving around a little bit. By taking a piece of 3 8 poly pipe and a little bit of electrical tape, it fits perfectly over the end of the can of spray foam. I put the 2x4s in front of the tubs to prevent the skirts from moving away from the tubs as I foam the tub. Many, many times in my professional career, I could see where somebody laid tile up to a fiberglass or acrylic tub and later bumped that skirt. When tubs aren't foamed, they can be prone to moving around a little bit. and we will likely have a tile of some sort in these bathrooms. So I would like to prevent them from moving as much as possible. Before I put the drywall up around the tub, I will still pack as much Roxel insulation around the tubs as well. This helps with noise, but it also helps to retain the heat when a bathtub's full of hot water. All of the pipes that are in exterior walls, initially I was gonna wrap what's called Thermoflex insulation around and then put Roxel behind it. I've since decided to use the spray foam around just the pipes and do it in such a way where it's virtually impossible for these pipes to freeze as long as the inside of the house is somewhat warm. The urethane foam insulation has a much higher R value than even the Roxel insulation does. The other thing that spray foam does that both Roxel and fiberglass or blown in insulation doesn't do is it seals. seals quite well. I'll end up using around 25 or 30 cans of spray foam. Do the math. At $3.20 a can, I'm investing a little bit of money to do this, but to think that this is where my cabinets are going to be in the kitchen. To spend 150 bucks to prevent the idea that I would ever have to tear those cabinets out to fix a pipe is money well spent. I've never done it like this before. This is a little bit of an experiment, but if it works out the way I think it will, I should be able to remove this board, put Roxel insulation above and below the spray foam and put drywall right up against it and be ready to go. I've learned over the years that urethane foam can be pretty nasty. If you get it on the concrete, you're better off just leaving it alone until it dries out and it scrapes right off. This is what the spray foam did two hours after I installed it. And this is what it looks like the next day. There's a little bit of a mess to clean up, but the good news is with the water weight inside the tubs, with the two by four across the front of the skirts, they didn't move an inch. The 
pipes are sealed up well, but the foam is still a little bit soft. I thought I'd be able to pull the forms off and get started with a Roxel, but it needs to wait through the weekend. This is the washer box upstairs in the laundry room. I initially moved the P-trap out of the wall and planned on putting the Thermoflex insulation around the half inch pipe. But again, I decided that using the spray foam, I could get this safe enough where I'd never have to worry about any pipes breaking. I've got to worry about the two inch P-trap as well as the half inch PEX lines. I tried to get both the house and the cans of insulation as warm as I could before doing this. The weather looks beautiful the rest of the week. I'll get back up here on Monday, pull these forms off, and take a look at how it turned out. The spray foam is basically done. I may have to add one more can, but I think it's better to watch and see um, kind of how this stuff expands out before I put another can in there. It's getting real warm real fast. Um, there's, I, I want to finish this, get these pipes really well sealed before I move on to the uh, Roxel insulation. I feel like Monday, I thought, I thought I'd be able to do it today. When I went to pull those forms off that insulation, I could see it was still a little bit soft um, off the foam, but uh, by, by Monday morning, it should be good to go. But we'll see, this looks like it was a, a good idea. Hopefully it's not another one of my, my uh, Oh, I guess weak attempts at, at doing something, uh, but I think it'll be fine. It was suggested, this is one of the suggestions that the inspector had was using some spray foam to just get a really high R value around those pipes. So anyway, um, I'll be back up here Monday morning and I'm gonna dive into the insulation. I have to uh, drill out all the bird blocks, um, get that finished up. That shouldn't take me but a day or so to do that, and then I'm gonna be insulation until I'm done, which I feel like there's maybe two days of insulation, if even that. Once I dive into that, I don't wanna stop doing that. That's kind of miserable work, and I'm gonna get dressed accordingly, and so, uh, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes, but uh, anyway, we're right there. We're right there with the drywall. My son and uh, myself started to bring a load of drywall up here yesterday. Uh, but I feel like my, uh, I feel like putting 40 sheets of drywall on the back of my truck might, might be a little bit much and I don't really want to tow a trailer up here right now. So we may just have to do it 20 sheets at a time or something. But anyway, we're moving forward. Um, first part of next week will be on the rest of the insulation and by the end of the week I'll be on the drywall.